Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about one of the more exciting algorithms available in the STL algorithms library, and that is transform. So some of you might know transform, but by other names such as map and other different languages, but in C++ it's transform for various historical reasons. There's already a map data structure, for instance. But anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this lesson here. So we're going to go ahead into the algorithm library here, scroll down, and this is a potentially modifying sequence operation here, because we'll go to transform, and we'll see how this works here. Now, as you can immediately see here, there's a bunch of different uh, various versions of transform here. But again, hopefully if you've been following this series and are subscribed, uh, this won't be too scary. But let's go ahead and look at uh, this one here, because this one here has been uh, effectively removed since C++20 and we've gotten a const expert version, OK, which is great. That means at compile time, again, we will try to evaluate this particular transform here. And the basic idea is we take in a range here, so two pairs of iterators, and then we output the result based off of some function here. So if it's going to walk through some collection of data, write out our result, and then uh, that result is calculated based off of this, what's known as a uh, urinary uh, operation here, which basically is just a function that takes one parameter and evaluates. Okay, so simple as that here. Okay. Um, and then again, if we look here, this version, uh, since C++ 17, we get rid of uh, this one here. Um, and uh, this particular operation here, or version of transform, uh, relies on you know, doing some operation between two data structures that are uh, of equal length. Uh, but again, starting from the first to the last of one, and then the first, uh, and then the, the length that should be the same as the first uh, range that you're looking at, and then outputting the result. And this takes a binary operation. We'll see if we want to take a look at an example there, uh, but that's the idea here. And then this is probably worth a separate video, but transform is something that can be parallelizable because if I'm just looking at some data structure and my results are sort of independent, I should be able to do things in parallel. So again, what transform is doing, uh, and I'll go ahead and write it here. Or again, if you've learned it in other languages, it might be like map of the, you know, uh, filter map reduce paradigm or map reduce filter, however you prefer to uh, say it. Uh, the basic idea is if I have some uh, collection here, something like this here, right? And I've got some elements, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm going to apply some function here individually to each of these elements. And then I'll either change uh, in place uh, if I don't have uh, some output or otherwise uh, write out those results to some other collection. So maybe the function that I'm applying is just like times two or something. So I should get two, four, six, uh, eight, 10, 12. Okay, so that's the idea here. Okay, uh, and these are being applied to this function and the results written out here. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Um, alrighty. So, uh, let's see. St std transform applies a given function to the range, stores the results in another range, keeping the original element order and beginning, uh, at first here. Okay. So it's not, uh, actually, um, always going to modify the range. Now that said, you can write out to the same, um, location. Um, so, so it could happen in place. Uh, that's why it's under the modifying, um, sequence, right? So if I have, again, let's just put in some numbers here, one and two, uh, and my output range is in fact here, I multiply by two, right? It's just going to apply that and overwrite these previous uh, results here. Okay. So maybe we'll do an example to make that a little bit more uh, concrete. Okay. And again, as mentioned, we do have these execution policies. That's part of the template class uh, that can allow things to execute in parallel here. Okay. So that's kind of an important thing here um, in various uh, domains. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, again, we're going to just uh, start off with writing a uh, urinary operation here that just takes in, well, whatever the input is and returns a result uh, and then writes out to a new location or in place. Uh, and then, of course, we could have two uh, collections that we're operating on here um, and returning a value as well. OK, uh, the return value output iterator to the element that follows the last element transformed. OK, so we can kind of see where we leave off. And then again, the complexity is linear for the amount of elements that we're looking at. 
times however much this function takes to operate, right? If it's a very expensive function, you know, this could be quadratic or more. If it's very, you know, constant time function, like a multiplication or something uh, that's effectively, you know, a constant, um, then that could probably be, you know, um, we could just look at this as linear. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, the nice thing is, I mean, as far as an implementation of this one here, if for some reason you didn't have transform available, which transform has been around for a long time, in the sense of just how we operate, right? We're just going to iterate through every uh, element in our range and apply whatever that function is uh, to each of the uh, elements here. Okay, so pretty simple uh, implementation. All right, so let's look at some examples here. Uh, let's look, we got a, a function here that takes in some uh, vector. Oh, this is just a helper function to print things out. Yeah, let's look at a string here, and I got a simple uh, function to upper. That's a good one to start with. Um, okay, so we could work with a string here. Let's go ahead and write a little uh, example here. Uh, to kind of mirror that, just to give it an idea of what's going on here. Let's go ahead and create our string here. Uh, I'm just going to call it uh, Mike. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a string for the output. Uh, I'll leave that empty. And let's just go ahead and write out uh, our string. So we can see what it uh, looks like here with an end line. And let's copy that line here and write out uh, S and out. Okay, now just getting ourselves set up here. No mistakes so far, looks good. And there we go here. All right, so we got the empty string and mic here. So now I wanna transform this. Um, and again, your options are to write a you know, a for loop on this, but I want to do the, or apply the same operation to each of these uh, characters here. So let's go ahead and do std transform. We'll look from the beginning. Uh, and again, they're being good here. They're using constant, uh, right? So this isn't going to change. So let's go ahead and, uh, and again, that's probably an important thing to make sure that we're not modifying, um, you know, this actual collection while we're operating on it. Uh, so let's be good and use the uh, constant iterators um, here. And uh, where are we writing to? Well, let's go ahead and write to out here, uh, out, uh, and from the start here, uh, and then our function, okay? Uh, and it is a uh, function that takes in one argument. It's going to be unsigned characters. And what are we going to be returning? Well, the return type is going to be deduced uh, for us from this lambda function here. Um, and we're just going to call to upper which is a built-in function here. Uh, and that's uh, that's it for us. Now let's go ahead and close off and put the semicolon in. For folks keeping track, I've messed that up in a lot of videos. <laughs> but let's go ahead and uh, compile this now. Uh, oh, double uh, standard. There we are. Double standards. All right. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and compile this. Okay. Uh, and... Well, let's see, we almost got this to work, right? What happened? Well, this is a classic case of, well, if I want to write out to something, let's go ahead and see our, uh, right, we need some sort of uh, output iterator here. Let me make sure I write the, uh, select the right one here. Uh, so let's go ahead and make this a uh, standard back inserter and out here, okay? Recompile, rerun. And there we go. There we get Mike and Mike. Now, again, with this version of transform, I've written out to this uh, new location here. That doesn't necessarily need to be the case here, though. OK, so again, if we uh, go back to the example that was provided here, you'll see that they are just writing to the original string here. OK, so we could we could do the same thing here uh, again if I just change this. Um, and that's how we're, they were able to get away with uh, S begin. Um, because, right, the length's the same here. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, increase things in any way here. Uh, so again, if I write this out again, it's just modified the string in place here, okay? I like this for now, writing out to a new uh, data structure. It sort of builds out a pipeline here. Now I am paying a cost here for the new string. And potentially, if you have a lot of strings, this could be a very expensive operation, right? If you're making more copies and rebuilding the structure. So sometimes you want to do things in place, sometimes not. Okay, so let's just go ahead and summarize that. Sometimes we want to do things in place, or sometimes 
we want a copy of our data. Okay, but you know, this building block is pretty flexible here with transform here. Alrighty, so let's see what else we can do with uh, transform here, just looking at some of these uh, examples. Um, and what's interesting, you know, when I think about transform here, uh, really, this next example is kind of capturing it. When I say that Transform's really been around for a long time, <laughs> it's basically for each where you are able to, uh, in this case, the function that you're passing in is by reference here. So that is going to modify it, okay, in place here. That's that's effectively the same exact uh, implementation here, okay? Um, so that's kind of uh, nice here uh, to know about. But, you know, maybe Transform is more descriptive, but you know, let's go ahead and see the notes above. Let's see what they say about this here. Um, okay, so here's some notes here. Standard transform does not guarantee in order application of our operations. To apply a function to a sequence in order or to apply a function that modifies elements of a sequence, use standard for each. Okay, so that's kind of interesting here. Um, I mean, I'm certain that could be the case if you have one of these parallel execution policies, maybe uh, when we investigate that a little bit more, that might be part of the uh, clarity here. So we've got a for loop or uh, you know for each or transform that we can use here. Um, again, it just kind of depends what building block you want, but um, I like this example here where I'm uh, sort of writing out the, the data structure here versus the for each one where I'm just modifying in place, or maybe, you know, you have something else. I guess, again, you could do the same thing uh, for what you want, but this is a little bit more explicit where I'm writing out the data, where it exists. So again, this might be what I prefer here um, for this type of operation. Now, the other thing to consider with uh, transform versus for each is we are getting a return value. Uh, which I might have, uh, right, we get the output iterator to the element that follows the last element that was transformed. So if that matters, if you're, again, I think this matters a little bit more for the parallel computation, if you're just breaking, um, you know, this into chunks of work, for instance, if your first and your last range are like every four elements or something, and you want to sort of break them up into groups, that could be important. Um, so uh, just a few different uh, thoughts there on transform versus, say, uh, for each here. Alrighty, so that's the famous transform uh, algorithm here. Uh, quite useful uh, to be using. Now you know how to use it in your code. You can go ahead and check your progress here as always. Uh, and with that said, folks, we've gone through, well, most of the modifying sequence operations that I have uh, planned for now. Uh, we might look back at some other ones. We might look at some of these in parallel. So let me know in the description below if you'd like to see that. Uh, but otherwise, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and we'll go ahead and see what we see next. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next time. Thanks for your time and attention as always, folks.